we're here with Don Dillman of Washington State University, who is one of the most respected voices at APOR on, uh, on all sorts of survey topics, but particularly on, you've done a career's worth of work on uh, surveys by mail and, and now by internet. Um, the hot topic, one of the clear hot topics at this conference is something called address-based sampling. What is that? Address-based sampling um, is simply being able to get all the residential household addresses in the United States and then be, or the geographic area people are interested in and then being able to sample them in order to have a representative sample of whatever population we're interested in. So in other words, there's a list, not necessarily of names, uh, but of all of the addresses that the post office maintains. Yes. Okay. Uh, the Postal Service now makes available uh, through vendors um, all of its residential addresses. There are no names, mm -hmm. but what it has is the addresses, uh, and so that we can have a truly representative sample of general public households. Okay, so most of the surveys that we look at it on pollster.com are done by telephone. Yes. Uh, and most of the national public opinion polls are done that way. How does a, an address which doesn't have a phone number attached to help you do, uh, how does that affect the interviews that we look at, or how could it? Well, the place to start on that is we've got some problems with random digit dialing. Mm -hmm. uh, one of them is our response rates have gotten much lower over time. The second one is that there are fewer proportion of households that have landlines, and there are many more cell phones, and the cell phone tends to be a personal device rather than a household device, and so it changes our whole schema for approaching households. The bigger problem, I think, with the telephone right. is culturally, that's not the way we communicate on, on business anymore, um, that we tend to communicate by email. And consequently, uh, when we start calling households, uh, it's a very different phenomenon than what we used to have, and it's harder to get results and, and that uh, are representative of the U.S. And then it, it occurred to me, uh, when I started going to meetings and I s saw people using address-based sampling to try to do national probability household surveys. These are the ones where, where the interviewers go and knock on doors. That's right. right. When I saw people doing that, I thought, oh, we've never had a way of really sampling internet addresses, mm -hmm. and it's inappropriate for us to contact people by the internet. But we can contact them by mail if we have a great sample. Mm -hmm. and try to convince them uh, to respond on the internet, or alternatively, they might respond on paper questionnaire. Mm -hmm. And uh, one of the reasons I've, I found this conference so interesting is we had a session yesterday uh, trying to do this and talk about it. And uh, some of the experimentation that I've done in, in Washington State is went to a statewide sample of these household addresses and I didn't send them a paper questionnaire, but I asked them to respond by the internet. But I told them that in two weeks I'd send them a paper questionnaire. So I was trying to encourage the internet response. And what I got back was about 46% of the household addresses where we had selected the respondent to answer, they sent in um, a completed questionnaire. Two thirds of those questionnaires came by the internet. Mm -hmm. The remaining third came when we sent the paper questionnaire out. And the interesting part to me is some households don't have internet addresses. I, 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 they don't have internet access, access from home. Right. And as a result of not having that, we can't expect them to respond by mail. Right. And there are different kinds of households. So what we found was that when we got both the internet and mail response, this gave us, we think, pretty good data that comes fairly close to the American Community Survey on the demographics. Mm -hmm. Now, so you've been doing uh, sort of pilot tests yes. of this sort of sampling. Has yeah. anyone used this to do a sort of public uh, media uh, survey about politics or about issues? And, and do you think that would be a, a, a reasonable thing to try to do in the next year or two? It, it hasn't been used as much there. Uh, mm -hmm. When one's trying to predict election outcomes mm -hmm. and, and it's got a very quick turnaround cycle, I don't see this really being used uh, in that way very effectively in the immediate future. Mm -hmm. But I think some people are going to try it. And, uh, but I do see it when we're trying to get in depth as to why people vote the way they do or, or some other things in understanding voting patterns of segments of the population. I think it's going to be used a lot.
Okay, Don Dillman, one of the more interesting topics here at the A4 conference. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Okay.